Um, let's not waste any more time. Let's get him out here. Ladies and gentlemen, Roddy Piper.
my reputation that bad. <laughs> Maybe Jesus. Not as strong as City Loppers. <laughs> yeah, good thing you're not Mr. D. <laughs> so, but as you would throw it on the way back, you know, you'd catch it here and they go, ah, jeez. And so finally I just said, listen, Keith, John, just hit me. From here down, just hit me and go as far as you can. And he had no problem doing that. <laughs> and um, so one of the things that kept the energy up in the fight was the fact we took, I think, maybe three sections as far as we could take it, as far as we could take it, as far as we could take it, and then came in the next day and did the, you know, the close-ups and stuff. Um, cut away. But, uh, and, it, and it's the longest fight in cinema history, I think, still. Yeah. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> <laughs> South Park even did like a full parrot, like a blow to blow. Oh, the man, man, little crippled kids. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I wouldn't watch it. They picked, somebody told me about it, and I, I felt so bad for about 10 years, I didn't watch it. And there was a, I was doing an autograph thing, and there was a beautiful little kid in a wheelchair that came up and told me about it. And he's laughing his ass off. <laughs> and I like, I got the problem, you know? And then I watched it, and the oh, baby, Jesus, put the hat on, and live with the crutch and the wheelchair, and Jimmy go, you know, if he likes it, then I like it too. <laughs> I just didn't want to offend him. Um, talk about that, the, the early scene where they kind of destroy the, uh, you know, the shanty town there. Um, that, that's a pretty big sequence, right? I mean, did you got, how long did that take to shoot? <sighs> you know, that was really homeless people, too. John used um, the homeless people. We had to pay two gangs off. <laughs> so when we left at night, the traders would be back in the morning. <laughs> of course, I knew the president of each gang, you know. That helped. <laughs> Shady background. <laughs> and um, uh, it, <laughs> um, there's a lot of people, great actors that, that, that aren't with us anymore. The um, fellow that played the, the priest, uh, uh, Jason Berry. Uh, 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 Buck Flower, too. Buck 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 Flower, Flower, yeah. Um, you know, they were all, they were all wonderful. There was some stuff when I was watching and that. It's so lame. Well, here's one. Do you remember when uh, so uh, uh, Nada and Keith and Rod are looking over America and there's a skyline of America and I think the line of dialogue or something. You know, I believe in America and stuff like that. Well, the big debate then, John Carpenter wanted us to smoke a joint while we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Keith didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So later on, TMZ just caught it, you know. It was all really cool. <laughs> now, now the, uh, true. the bubblegum line, I understand, was an improv. And lame one, too, huh? <laughs> no, folks, it's never. Yeah, it's, <laughs> how many times have you had to sign that, you think? Well, I finally got it down to no bubblegum. <laughs> you know, you know, like writing a novel. And, um, <laughs> Because what had happened was, <clears throat> John says, action, you know, and they says, hold the roll, like, you know, guys, everything's burning. And he says, Roddy, you know, you're going into a bank, you got bullets on, you got a shotgun, you got sunglasses, you got to say something because you're not robbing it. <laughs> action! How <laughs> <laughs> come there two bubble gum tickets to all over Lunch! <laughs> and I was walking back going, I never even talked nothing about it. I sat down. You know. One time Macho Man comes to me, he goes, Oh Wife's a bitch and she's back in the heat. Okay. I had a halo. I lay down on the dressing room floor. I swear to God. He gets pissed. Whoa! Wife's a bitch? And I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I didn't know I'd said it. <laughs> he was naked shaving his ass with a rock hole when he said it, so I, I can see the source. <laughs> uh, 
too much information there, man. Yeah, like, oh, that's how you got that. Oh, I, I can't top that possibly, so I'm gonna turn it over to you guys now. Uh, you guys got some questions for Roddy? Yeah, right, y'all look so good. Clearly, you did almost everything we see you doing in that movie. Were there any stunts you didn't do yourself, like the fall out of the window? Or you know, <laughs> thank you, Dan. Uh, did I fall out the window and do all the stunts? I did all the stunts myself, with except, you know, Meg Foster, uh, when she hits me in the back of the head with a bottle, I mean, obviously it's a candy, candy glass, but you gotta, you know, hit it. So, like the first take, and she's trying to be generous, and then she goes like, clunk. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Take two. Clunk. Hey, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Day three, what? <laughs> and uh, stunt. <laughs> a guy named Joel. He did a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Joel Schumacher, maybe. He actually. <laughs> he's not with us anymore. <laughs> he went out. He actually went out the window. So other than going out the window, and I'm sure if it was the last shot of the movie, they would have let me do it. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I did all the stunts myself. You know? You're still a fucking badass. Man. Not yet. <laughs> During your fight sequences, uh, one of the first sequences uh, with the two police in the alley, um, there's a lot of wrestling moves. You gave him a short arm clothesline, and then when you're on the feet, back suplex, and gut wrench suplex. Yeah. Yeah. Now, John Carpenter, that was already written in, or did you improvise those wrestling moves? No, I improvised all that. You want to know? I never told this story. Anyway, this is just keep it in the room. <laughs> And this one policeman comes, and I lower the shotgun on him, lower the shotgun on him, and I'm checking him on the glasses, but he's a human. So I say, beat your feet, and then he takes off, right? And every uh, artist, when they look at a script, you know, it's their interpretation. So it was time for the scene. I hadn't talked to the actor, you know? And so I heard, boom, you know, whatever. I said, stop, you know? And I know, all right, beat your feet. He went like this. <laughs> Just his interpretation, I guess. <laughs> Forgot about that until I just saw it. I, this is only the second time I've seen it. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I only saw it the screening. And uh, I hate watching myself. I suck, man. <laughs> you know, I love you. You just got your bar set real low today. <laughs> The mullet. <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's so lame. I used to, they made me get up every morning at 4 a.m. and I had to spend in the a sauna from 4 a.m. to 5.30. And then when I got to my trailer, they had um, uh, the ice in the sink and water. I had to soak my face in the ice. And, okay, I'm a fighter. You ain't gonna get Tom Cruise here no matter how much ice in the sauna you're do. <laughs> Uh, you know, I did that. And, uh, I lost about 30 pounds for it. And there were some people at the beginning, wrestling fans sometimes have imaginations. And they didn't believe it was my body, and they thought somehow Carpenter put my head on somebody else's body. I must have looked really bad before. <laughs> That's cool. Got some more questions? Anyone else? No? All right, here we go. This guy back here. Yeah. Where's the podcast coming? Podcast? I'm doing a rodcast. Rod Pod. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to shake the shit out of everybody. <laughs> I'm doing a universal. I'm going to start the first one Monday. And you know, I'm trying to get... Oh, I jeepers, I forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my best friends, I did a show I can't talk a lot about called Legend House. And they put eight legends in a house. Uh, Marco... Uh, 
Just thinking, Harpo Marx Mansion in Palm Springs for four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> No clocks, no computers, no cell phones, no nothing. Every day they come to tell you something, and they gave me a roommate. Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's busy walking Santa Monica right now. <laughs> but my roommate ended up to be Hacksaw Jim Dunn. <laughs> with his family. Where are you, Axel? Where are you? Yeah. And his beautiful wife and his two daughters. So, yeah. Very cool. Oh, man. <laughs> and he's just like a great guy. He, uh... Jeez, he's always kidding around. I said, did you order your food? He says, no, I asked it nicely. <laughs> Four weeks. <laughs> uh, 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 well, I can't say no more, but I sure want to. <laughs> anyway, I really appreciate you coming, Hacksaw. I love you and your beautiful family. Oh, I tried to do it. I tried to do this. I tried to, uh, you know, wrestlers. I tried. I said, you know, hey, Hacksaw, I'm a little late. I'll meet you at noon on Santa Monica Boulevard Sunday. Just wear shorts, it's hot. <laughs> He's from Buffalo. <laughs> but, you know, didn't work. Yeah, right. When you uh, first met Meg Foster, did you trip out on her eyes? Oh, man. Whoa, baby. She's so beautiful. And I, you know, in Carbon to Cast, it, uh, uh, Keith Franks has got that, um, Shakespearean war, you know. You crazy motherfucker! <laughs> and then there's me. <laughs> and she, you know, she just brings you right in. And the eyes were just, holy cow. <sighs> my daughter's here, so I'm just going to end that <laughs> And I went home to my beautiful wife. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'll be married 30 years, October the 12th. to a saint and so am I to put up a heart bullshit. <laughs> Speaking of, I never noticed till watching it uh, you know, on the big screen today that you're not as married apparently. That's your actual wedding ring though, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> I'm only 49. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things I just wouldn't take my wedding ring off for. One of the things that the, the layers with uh, John Knott, who was first of all obviously Nada means nothing in Spanish. You don't know where he came from. You don't know why he's doing what he's doing. You don't know why he has a wedding. You know nothing about him. And it keeps, it keeps a mystique. The book I wrote, I started when I was, I started the book when I was 15. And I haven't really talked about it earlier than that. And that's where John Carpenter got the idea of, because you don't really know anything about him, it makes him more intriguing. It makes you, makes you want to watch more. And then it was also my way, um, like I got four of the most beautiful kids in the world. And I miss them uh, when I get out on the road. And so it was my way, like some in, even in interviews, of just kind of like Carol Burnett pulled her ear, you know. And it was my way just telling my family that I love them. No matter what project or how big, there's nothing that outranks my family. That's what I'm Yeah, it's our special effects. <laughs> we got the thing that went, that's it. <laughs> I always think it's kind of cool when it
original into and kind of sneak them into the to the remake? And I'm just yeah. wondering, has anybody contacted you about this? Um, John Carpenter, I had dinner with him like, oh my goodness, two and a half years ago. And that's when this came up, that they were going to do the remake. Uh, Chef Gordon lives in Hawaii and um, Wyatt um, were the executive producers on it. Now, I've heard that, one, they're not going to have glasses in it. And two, they're not going to have a fight in it. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's more, um, I don't want to ruin any plots here. So, uh, it's a different way that they're going to go about to snatch bodies and stuff. And I, I wish them all the luck in the world, but i tell you what I would like to do. I'd like to like, do one really quick cameo scene in it and be like way up on a mountain by myself in a log cabin, you know, and have a dog named, this big named Runt. <laughs> and let one down to the town just one time and close like the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> And then throw in my bubble gum and say goodbye. Yeah. All right, last one, last one. I saw this guy's hands first. Yeah. I want to ask how uh, it was Keith on set because it looked like he had the funnest possible job. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He uh, Keith uh, David is. He's a wonderful man, and uh, you know he couldn't quit laughing at my mistakes. <laughs> I was a continual sense of humor for him. And he liked the idea of mixing it up with the fighter, you know. Uh, and uh, like that alley, the alley that we fought in, it was like Hobo's Alley. And it was like the urinal and the stuff. And, got, and they got the thing in there, spritz, shooting it down with lye. And I'm looking over there and I'm looking at Keith and he's just laughing because he knows I'm going to be in there. <laughs> Yeah, he had a really good time. <laughs> well, it was a hard movie to make. It was a hard movie to make from the, it was six weeks, I think. And there was, you see, when I left, um, this is kind of weird, when I left the WWF at that time, I got a message by my lawyer, you tell Piper that only Hogan and I are the true blue WWFers. Because my business thought that I betrayed them by coming to Hollywood. When I got to Hollywood, they looked at me like, oh great, another fucking idiot jock coming to the part of my language, another idiot jock coming, a little late. Uh, <laughs> so like, nobody liked me, and I was used to that, I'd been married a while, and uh, <laughs> but I kind of got out in no man's land there, and so it was very difficult to kind of keep everything together, and they were trying to take a kid that was raised by gypsies, and all of a sudden throw him in Hollywood, and, that's not what Nada was about. Nada was about, uh, he's your, he's your, he's all of you. I just met Shepard Ferry, who's the guy that did the Andre posters and came out with the clothing line Obey and uh, this other artist. We sat down for about two hours, the things that have happened from this movie. And John Nada is you. He's every one of you, not blue collar, white collar. He's you, and that's why you know nothing about him, because it depends on if it's you, then that's what's about him. If it's you, then that's what's about him. But he's supposed to represent everybody, not just America, everybody in the world. And um, that's kind of why you as an audience fill in the nothing and whatever ethics and morals uh, they were fighting for at the time. There is an underneath, like when I go to do press, I had to take my Rolex off, you know, because I'm buy American. <laughs> you know, okay, John, and Reaganomics and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I just talking, I guess. <laughs> Thank you.